The 1970s was marked by the rise of black consciousness and the black power movement. It was against this backdrop that Selwyn Richardson bestrode the political arena as Attorney General in 1976 under the then Eric Williams and later George Chambers administrations. During his time in politics, he became a symbol of political integrity, being often referred to as Mr. Clean and the Corruption Fighter. This legacy stayed with him and was integral to the success of the National Alliance for Reconstruction in the 1980s. At that time, he was quite disillusioned with the state of affairs of the country's politics and its sense of morality. And he began to, to meet with us uh, as we were trying to form the National Alliance for Reconstruction. Now, he burst on the political scene with a very dramatic entry, and it is very, very vivid in my mind today at a convention center in Chalaramas where we had thousands of thousands of people coming for the, the beginning of the election campaign in 1986. And when Selvin Richardson was announced as a candidate for the National Alliance for Reconstruction, there was electricity in the air. It is an image that I will never forget. And it turned out that he was, in fact, the symbol for integrity because most of his fights have been to restore integrity in, in public institutions. And I sense the people who were there felt that. And that image, as I said, is one that inspired and electrified the party, which obviously helped us considerably in, in forming the government a few months later. So, who was the man Selwyn Richardson? Selwyn Richardson was born November 30, 1935 on 55 Henry Street, where Abraham's fruit still stands. His family traced its roots to Mayaro, where he spent his formative years, and later in life he was elected to Parliament to represent the people of Ottawa Mayaro. Selwyn's school life began at the Mayaro Primary School, where he also taught as a student teacher. He graduated to Tranquility Boys Intermediate and then moved to the prestigious St. Mary's College. He then went on to attend Gray's Inn, one of London's four inns of court in England, to pursue law. While in England, he served in the Royal Air Force and was socially active. I was in the Air Force and um, I heard there were some Trinidadians, other Trinidadians there, and when I checked he was in the, in, in the supply department. And then we played cricket together over there. And um, as a matter of fact, he thought he was a cricketer. He thought he was a good cricketer. So one of the things he did in Parliament, if you want to talk about Parliament, when he came back, he organized a Parliament cricket team. And we played a lot of fat matches. There was a guy in Balandra who had a, a sort of touring team. And we played a couple of matches against him, and we played a, a lot of matches. He, he, he was an organizer, um, a social activist. Upon his return from England, Richardson became involved in politics, joining the People's National Movement and serving as vice president of a party group in Digo Martin, organizing lectures, meetings and educational activities for the group. During this time, he also served as a member of the board of the telephone company of Trinidad and Tobago, where he developed his passionate desire to wipe out corruption and inefficiency. In 1976, he was made a PNM Senator and Attorney General by Prime Minister Eric Williams. And it was as Attorney General that his image as Mr. Clean was greatly enhanced as he waged an anti-corruption campaign. His shining moment was the investigation into the infamous DC-9 scandal. This investigation was successful in exposing corruption. Richardson's term as a PNM Senator came to an end in 1981, by which time George Chambers had succeeded Eric Williams as Prime Minister. During the period 1981 through 1986, Richardson retreated from active politics, taking on the role of Chairman of the Airports Authority of Trinidad and Tobago. It was a role in which he excelled, and his tenure was marked with notable achievements completion of a system of uninterruptible power supply, installation of a single side band radio, perimeter fence lighting, airport parking apron expansion, passenger terminal expansion, additional car park facilities, and the installation of high intensity approach lights. Significant improvements were also successfully undertaken at Crown Point Tobago. 
In 1984, Richardson's commitment and dedication to country through his sterling efforts received a just acclamation when he received the coveted Express Individual of the Year Award from Justice Sir Isaac Hayatali. Sir Isaac noted that the award was solely for his outstanding accomplishments and success as Chairman of the Airports Authority of Trinidad and Tobago and for no other activity or achievements whatsoever. With the clarion call for greater integrity in politics, Richardson resigned the PNM and chairmanship of the Airports Authority in 1986 and joined the National Alliance for Reconstruction, successfully contesting the Ottawa Mayaro seat. Richardson's persona of integrity meant he was well respected by his peers and the public that had voted for change. I began a working relationship with Telvin um, as a member of cabinet and he was uh, Attorney General and was a person who I have always found truly committed to this country. No one ever questioned the motives of Selvin. No one ever felt that there was any individual interest that he was pursuing or that he was promoting the, the ideas of some group in the society. It was a man whose motive you accepted and a man whose views you trusted. And in his discharge of his duty during the time he was in cabinet with me, I remember him having considerable influence over the decisions of cabinet because he had the moral authority to speak. And also having come from the, the, the People's National Movement uh, into a new formation, that gave him, gave him additional sense of, 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 of trust. I would say, because it was not a narrow political view. He was talking for Trinidad and Tobago. I can honestly tell you that, I mean, you can't put your head on a block for anybody, but he's probably one of the most honest persons that I've ever known. I, I can't see that anybody could be talking Selwyn into doing something dishonest. And even in the very little things, he was always very, he was morally upright, um, he was totally honest and his integrity was without question. I mean, there is no doubt about that. Richardson's commitment to public service did not preempt an active social life or his commitment to family. Twice married, he was the proud father of three children. He had three, three children, one boy and two girls. First was a girl, Charmaine, she lives in London still. Then he had Sean, who's here. No. And then the last girl, Janelle, she is still in London attending school, you know, university. And he loved his children very much, he loved his family very, very much, just as he loved all his family. Take me, an uncle, as I said, I, I consider him as my last little brother, because he did nothing without talking to me. We, we spoke almost every day. I, he either called me or I called him. The Sunday after Carnival, we would meet under a mango tree at his home in um, St. Anne's, right? And that was a social event that we looked forward to. As a matter of fact, um, one of the other things that they did, um, this question of all-inclusive functions, right? I might be bold enough to say that they, they sort of inaugurated, they invented all, all, all inclusive fets, right? Because Joyce and a group of girls, um, I think they were called the TV girls at the time, they started off these um, all inclusive fets with Selwyn as the main mover. And we used to have, that time, um, Winshaw had a club in Bayshore, I think it's Bayshore. And for $45, we had marvelous all-inclusive fets, you know what I mean? The, the $600 fets that you're having now, they were $45. But he, 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 those are the kind of things he did. He, he, you know, he, he went outside of farm. Um, he was always active, always doing something, always, always doing something. And as busy as he was with matters of state and family commitments, Richardson remained committed to his Mayaro roots, serving as president of the Mayaro Old Boys and Girls Association from 1972 to 1989. Um, he was the originator of the Mayaro Old Boys around that time. 
And, and we were the first old boys group to be organized. Then you had the man's and old boys and the talk old boys, which are still going. Um, I was just, well, I suppose we got too old and we just, all of us moved out to Miaro. But um, he was that kind of organizer. He was a, a, a person who couldn't sit still. He, 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 every minute of his time was occupied doing something. So if he wasn't involved in politics, he was involved in, in social activity. In 1994, Richardson's life came to a tragic end when he was shot outside his Saman Road Cascade home when returning home from wishing his son Sean happy birthday. His death brought to an end the life of one of the great statesmen in the short history of our country. The perpetrator or perpetrators were never brought to justice and his murder remains a mystery to this date. He was always active, always doing something. And, he, and he, was, he was the kind of person who would actually do it. For example, if we had a cleanup campaign, he would come and do it. He wouldn't just um, ask somebody to do something. He would be there with you doing it. As we say here in Trinidad, he's a saltfish. Everybody knew him. Everybody knew him. And everybody loved him. A dynamic, versatile, and colorful politician, Richardson is remembered for his numerous roles in the social, economic, and political development of Trinidad and Tobago. He will forever be Mr. Clean, the corruption fighter.